Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Fisheries Division Chief Greg Power. Uh, we, of course, just finished up our annual fishing reports from across the state. Greg, I gotta tell you, it certainly appears and it sounded like from all the fishing reports that fishing is just excellent across the state. Yeah, and it's no surprise it's been that way now for a number of years. Uh, you put all the districts together, we have record number of fishing lakes, you know, we're somewhere in that 425 lakes, never have, never have we had that many fishing lakes out there, and most of them have excellent uh, fish populations, so yeah, fishing's been good, and hopefully, knock on wood, it's going to continue that way. <laughs> the water levels are, of course, in, in pretty good shape across well, the state, but now we talked about fish species with all of your supervisors across the state, and it appears that with a few minor exceptions, they're uh, pretty good shape there too. They, they are, you know, in, in North Dakota, again, we're back, we got th the three primary species are walleye, pike, and perch. You know, those are the one that the anglers want the most. That's what we have the most opportunity out there to, you know, that's what we offer the most. Uh, and, and as a general rule, we're in great shape. It's a little concerning how dry it's been now for a while. We're losing water, especially south of the interstate. Mm -hmm. uh, we're down a couple feet and, you know, if this continues, it's going to become an issue as, as uh, summer progresses. But, you know, all things considered, we're in great shape. And, you know, that maybe some of the other niche species, the bass, actually, actually some of the other species like the bass or catfish, um, there's some pretty good populations out there. It's just not a lot of attention to them. So. Yeah, we're, we're in great shape. Many of our surrounding states, Greg, use tools like slot limits to try to improve their fisheries. We've been successful without them. Uh, let's talk about that. First of all, what is a slot limit? Well, a slot, slot limit is one of a couple of different, and it, the slot limits are generally used for walleye. Bass too, but generally for walleye. It's just a length restriction. It's one of a couple different tools you can do. There's a one over, there's a maximum, there's a, a minimum length limit, and the mm -hmm. slot limit. Slot limit, you come up with some, some uh, size that you want to protect intermediate size fish. Uh, it's done more so to protect, uh, presumably, to, done to protect uh, uh, spawning females. Sure. Uh, in, in, in cases where you're really concerned about limited brood out there, that there aren't enough eggs to get the job done. And there's certain criteria. There's basically four criteria that go into any of them. Biologically speaking, you need to have uh, relatively high, high uh, mortality rates, high angling effort, you need to have slow growth, and you need to have uh, reproduction problems. And we, we assess our fish, yeah, it gets complicated. It's, it's bio, you know, again, it's biology, but that's what our guys do. That's what they're trained to do. That's what we're all about. And uh, well, why do we feel that we don't need them? Well, and that's what, and they look at these things every year, especially on, I can't say all lakes, but on the larger lakes, especially the big three. But we look at, we collect the data during the course of the year. We look at the data. Um, and we just don't, we, you know, one of the bottom line things is we, we have decent growth in our fisheries. We don't have slow growth in our, in our fisheries. So that criteria is seldom is met. Uh, we have decent reproduction we can stock. I mean, stocking is a big deal in our state. And so we're not generally limited with small fish coming on. And we don't have the effort that a lot of people think, we, oh, we're so many pe people get a snapshot, let's say in the Missouri River at Hazleton in April or Van Hook up on Lake Sakakwe or Graham's Island uh, at Devil's Lake in June. And they'll see hundreds of boats, maybe in the small area, and now ah, they're just, they're, they're really hammering the fishery. And for those few days in that area, they are. But in the scheme of the size of the water body, and that's something we pay careful attention to. Our exploitation rates are, we're, we're just not there. We're, our rates, we're generally running somewhere around 25% exploitation rate. Uh, and, you, and the level of concern is when you get in that 40 to 55 percent. So, you know, it's, again, it's something our guys spend a lot of time looking at and do a good job. And, and, and the proof is out there. I mean, Obviously, they yeah. do a good job as fishing is, uh, is right. excellent. Let me play devil, devil's advocate for a minute here, Greg. There are some people that say, why don't we be proactive and protect these spawning walleyes before they need protecting? Yeah. 
You know, and the, the, uh, the f I, I smile because that same thing was said last <laughs> year, was asked five years ago, was asked 10 years ago, was asked 20 and 25 years ago. It's, it's nothing new, you know, that concept. Uh, we've resisted it, again, because of, first off, we don't have, we're not limited about broodfish. People in the spring of the year get pretty possessive about big females. And, and, and it's great that they're released. There's, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But on the flip side, there's nothing wrong with keeping a fish or two. And uh, Lake Oahe is a great example. That is a natural, that, that w that's a lake that hasn't been stocked with walleye. That is all natural reproduction. Uh, there's been some years, just go back a couple years ago, 2012, there was great concern about spring of 2012 that people were catching fish everywhere. We have to close it down. We have to close it down and take all the big fish out. Guess what, fast forward two years, 2014, just last year, we had an excellent year class of walleye. Go back during the bad drought in the early 2000s, when the fish were in bad shape and the people were all concerned, guess what, in 2001 or two, we had one of our best years of natural reproduction. So it's about habitat, and it's about just the right weather conditions coming together, it's more so than uh, anglers taking a few uh, females that are running eggs. And we've been open on Missouri River system since 1975. So 40, we're 40 years now that it has been open. And today's fishery, uh, it'd be hard to argue that it's any worse off than it was you know, 10, 20, 30, or 40 years ago. Sure, you and your supervisors, of course, are always watching that predator prey, the, the forage bases, and trying to get those balanced. And that's where some of this comes into oh, play again. It really does, in North Dakota, you know, I've said this many times, where sustainability, we live and die in, in floods and droughts. Our weather patterns and our water resources are way up there or way down. And, and, it, and to try to manage for some long-term average is virtually impossible. And our forage comes and goes. So if we were to make a regulation change based on forage and growth rates, let's say for, for a while, about the time we'd implement them, the whole system would have done a 180 and we'd be the opposite. We'd have all kinds of forage or, or the flip side. So it's, it's a, it, balancing predator prey in this state is a very difficult thing. And we found over the long haul, you just ride out the storms in those, you know, those peaks and valleys and we'll be in good shape. Sure. You mentioned earlier uh, that keeping a big female here or a big female there really doesn't hurt anything. But um, we do recommend that people release at least some of the uh, spawning females. So it actually looks kind of gaudy to see someone bring a limit of four, five, or six pound walleyes and, to the cleaning station. And that's been a social change that's mm -hmm. gone on more than anything. That goes back to, you know, way back into the early years of the in fishermen and, and, and releasing the big fish. And um, the, we don't have any, so theoretically somebody can catch and keep five, eight pound walleye. That's legal, there's nothing, and if, whether it's ethical or not, that becomes a, a, a debate. That's definitely a good uh, uh, barroom discussion sometimes. But again, it's, and, and every boat has their, every person has their own. For example, I have, when I go fishing, my, my boat standards are 16 to 20 inches. Anything smaller or larger goes back. And everybody I fish with generally follows that line. But, you can't condemn somebody for keeping a couple big walleye. There's not, it does not hurt the resource. We've got a few small lakes, Greg, that do have minimum size limits on it. So what's, what's the theory behind the minimum size yeah, limit? We do. We, ha we have a handful of, of lakes with 14-inch minimums, and, and half a dozen of them are in the southeast part of the state, in Richland and Sargent counties. And they're relatively new lakes. We, we decided and agreed with some of the local people down there that we're going to do have these regulations on a half a dozen lakes, and then there's another half a dozen similar lakes in the same area that don't have any regulation. And we're in, a, well, we're in the middle of a five-year evaluation of that, whether it works or not. Uh, the conditions down there are a little bit different. They have South Dakota, they have Minnesota right next door, They're right in the corner of the state. They have a lot of fishing pressure from Fargo, a lot of non-resident fishing pressure. Exploitation rates are probably higher down there, so we're, we're assessing that. And then one other lake that we've had a 14 inch or lakes for quite a while is Jamestown and Pipe Pipestem. And those are two lakes, James, Jamestown in particular. It's a large, or it's not a very large lake. And you have the town of Jamestown, a lot of people fish from Jamestown, and it does get a lot of fishing pressure on that lake. 
we've had that 14 inch in there, there and that, that, that lake probably really does qualify for a lake that needs some protection. Minnesota has its traditional fishing opener generally around the middle of May. Could be declared a state holiday. It's kind yeah. of like our deer opener. Everybody goes out on the Minnesota opener. North Dakota is one of the only states in the country that has virtually no season. Right. We leave our inland lakes, our rivers open year round. Why do we do that? And that's, you know, going back in time again, the Missouri River system has been open year round since uh, 1975. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found that, you know, back in the 70s when that, that occurred, there wasn't the bolts, there, weren't, there wasn't just the technology. We didn't think that the impacts would be significant. The Missouri River system with, you know, four or 500,000 acres of water in North Dakota, they didn't impact anything, and it, it never did. Uh, in 1993, we had a lot of internal debate, and we said, you know, there's opportunity lost by having these seasons closed. Uh, so we opened it up statewide in 93. The fishery at that time was nothing like it is today. Uh, so we were careful and we watched it very carefully. And something we found out real quick was, for example, pike was also closed in the spring of the year. It wasn't just walleye fishing, it was a number of species, pike included. April's a great month for pike fishing. And anybody and everybody can do it, and it's shore fishermen too. And we've, what we've seen, in 20 years now of being open statewide is again, we haven't seen any negative impacts, but we've sure seen a lot of positive, and they're called smiles on people's faces. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's just a lot of fish caught, and you can catch them from shore. That's a neat thing in the spring. You don't need to have a boat, you know, to go out and get your walleye or pike. So we've, we've really increased recreational opportunity in the state, and really with no downside to date. So bottom line is Game and Fish wants to provide the most fishing opportunities for the most anglers sure. at the most time. Absolutely. If we, as, as long as it's not really hurting the resource. And so far, so good. Great. Something that we're going to keep an eye on, though. I mean, it doesn't mean this is going to be like this forever, that's for sure. Greg, thanks. You bet. If you want to fish one of those lakes that Greg talked about, you can find lots of useful information at the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. You can find directions to nearly every lake in North Dakota from the town nearest the lake. You can also find out what species of fish have been stocked in the lake and how many. You can also download topographical maps of many of the lakes discussed in the webcast. They will show you the depths and contours and structure to help you find fish. Again, the Game and Fish website can be located at gf.nd.gov. For Greg Power and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, Thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.